Hi, welcome to episode 4. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to sniff for VoIP packets and how to avoid, theoretically, that happening to you. So first off, we got to wonder, why is it important? Well, after post 9-11 and government style, uh, governments tap in everything these days, from landlines to mobile phones to internet. So we got to worry about that. Second off, we got to worry about you know the lead hack source that might steal your credit card data, your social security number, your whole identity. Hell, they'd steal anything these days. Um, so what we're going to do? is we're going to avoid that happening to us. Okay, so first off, to sniff for something, we gotta download Kane and Abel. So you can download that from oxid.it. So we're gonna start up Kane. After you start up Kane, you're going to go to the sniffer tab. Then you're going to press the button that looks like a network card. After doing that, you're going to do the add to list button, which looks like a blue cross. You're going to do the target for all hosts in my subnet, and you're going to click OK. It's going to come up with all the MAC addresses, which basically include all the computers that are connected into your network. After doing that, we're going to go and do an ARP poisoning attack. Now, what you're probably wondering is, what is ARP poisoning? Well, what ARP poisoning is, is a man-in-the-middle attack. What's man-in-the-middle attack? Well, it's where one computer connects to the router, but yet you are in the middle. Yet neither the computers nor the router know that you're actually in the middle. So you're, you're intercepting data, whether it be AIM stuff, whether it be VoIP stuff, whether it be passwords, you know, router password, email password, it, the list goes on and on. You get the idea. So what we're going to be sniffing for right now are the VoIP packets. So we're going to start up the ARP uh, poisoning by going to the ARP sub-tab, then we're going to click the blue cross again, and you're going to select the 192.168.0.1, which is basically the default IP address. You're going to click on to the right, you're going to uh, select, for my purpose, the 192.168.0.13, which I know is uh, William's computer, because we're going to be testing this out today. And after we do that, we're going to do the R poisoning. So right now, it's going from Will's computer to the router, but without him or the router knowing, I'm intercepting some of his data. So what we're going to do now is going to wait for a phone call to go on. We're going to record those. Now when it records those, it records it as a WAV file. And we can get that, and then we can listen to that. However, because we're only doing it on one side, we're only going to hear his will side. We're not going to hear the other side. You can get a lot of information from one side, and you can probably piece together what the other person said. But for all practical purposes, it's pretty much impossible without both people being on the same network at the same time to get all the conversation. So you can only get half. Half is better than none though. Now, what you're probably wondering is, how can we secure ourselves from this? Well, first off, my biggest recommendation to you is using Skype. Skype is very good because it has built-in encryption in it. However, it doesn't provide from Skype to an outside computer that does not use Skype, nor does it provide from Skype to an outside mobile phone or landline phone because it just doesn't have it. Skype has integrated encryption to it, like I said before, so Skype is probably your biggest bet. Um, another thing you could do is you can download uh, Zphone, which is made by P Phil Zimmerman, the same guy that brought us you know, PGP. Um, it works with most SIP uh, VoIP clients. It's, it's pretty good. I talked to uh, Mr. Zimmerman today. He was really helpful about some of the questions I had. Uh, very good piece of software. There's a new version coming out this week. Go out there and get it if you have uh, the VoIP provider and the VoIP client that it supports. And the third thing you can do for our practical application is you can put it on a VPN. If you don't know how to do that, don't really worry about it. Maybe if your uh, a, a friend has a VPN at work or something like that, that might be your best bet. So those three recommendations, Skype, Zphone, or you can use PG, or not PGP, or three, you can use a VPN. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope it's educational. Stay safe, stay encrypted.